Hi, I'm Bobby, and this is the next installment in the Anti-Nice Guy series. Now, in the last video, we talked about the idea that women test you. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about how to pass the tests. Let's talk about these tests. Now, first, I want to give you a story. Um, and I want to tell you this story because it's the exact moment I learned to love being tested by women. Now, it wasn't always this way. In fact, for a really long time, I was clueless to the fact that I was even being tested by women. I, I didn't even understand it, right? I thought that when a girl got bitchy or demanding or she got sarcastic or kind of, you know, you could tell that she was a little cold towards me. I thought she was signaling that she was no longer interested. And in my naive brain, I thought that, well, if she's losing interest in me, doesn't that mean that I have to up my interest level in her and I have to try harder and I have to work more to win her over? <laughs> You'd think so, but when you start paying close attention, I started to notice that that wasn't the case. Showing more interest, coddling her or apologizing only seems to push her further away. Um, number two is the more that girls get away with the less respect they'd seem to have for me. The few times that I actually stood up to them, they, they, it's almost like they seemed to immediately do a 180 degree shift and, and, and I think they respected me more. So a few years back, I was on vacation in Mexico and I was down there with this girl, Nicole, and I'd been dating Nicole for a while, but our relationship was always kind of mm, iffy and it, it finally became a more physical level where we were actually like, out in the open relationship. And I'm really into her, right? Uh, you know, when, when we finally, you know, went from sort of friend zone to physical level, I was really scared of doing anything that would ruin that. So like a puppy dog, I'd bring her breakfast in bed in the morning. When she got snippy with me, which she did often, I kind of just shut up and take it. And when she made rude comments about some of my friends who were down in Mexico with us, you know, I kind of obediently agreed with her. Now, she wasn't a bad girl, right? She had a bad side, and I'm, and I'm giving to you, there was also positives. But what started out as a dream week was slowly turning into a disaster because outwardly, nothing changed in our relationship, right? She was still kissing me. We were still, you know, sleeping and whatever. Um, but inside, I sensed that she was losing respect for me. And in my gut level, I can tell it was happening. And... The worst thing was I felt helpless to do anything about it. She had me and she knew it. I was too terrified of doing anything that might offend her that I was quickly burying my chances of taking this relationship with her any further. Uh, because of this, I, I decided that the best way to try to win back some of my power was to talk a big game, right? I knew that, oh, you gotta make, you know, girls think other girls want you and make them jealous or whatever. So I'd brag about some of my, you know, my past accomplishments or I'd tell stories about, you know, some good job that I had or some money that I'm about to make or, uh, you know, I was bragging. And to be honest, by this time, talk was cheap. By the end of the week, I had pretty much already come to the, uh, to the conclusion, mentally at least, that I blew it. Um, I sensed her slipping away and I had basically accepted this as my fate, right? Um, I didn't really know why. You know, I knew she was acting differently, but I didn't know why. What was interesting, though, is that once I accepted that this fling in Mexico was going to be the end once the vacation ended, I felt weirdly liberated. And the last day of our trip, the two of us got into a little debate, a little argument about our flight home. Because what happened was a flight opened up that would have allowed us to take a more direct flight back without having to do the stopovers in uh, Florida and we'd go right to New York. But the problem was that they only had two seats available on this better flight. And this meant that it, you know, if me and her, if me and Nicole took this flight, we'd be separated from my friends and um, that I would get the good flight. I, they were stuck in like a seven hour shitty flight with a stopover and stuff. <clears throat> now, since I basically resolved to losing Nicole, I figured that I would rather fly home with my friends than risk, you know, pissing them off for a girl that I was about to lose anyway. This is where it gets really interesting. 
So I told my girl, right? I said, I prefer that we fly home with my friends on the same flight, even though it's longer. You know, I want to go with them. We came here with them. Let's go home with them. And this sets her off into a bitchy and sort of sarcastic mode. So the entire ride to the airport, she was silent. She'd barely look at me, you know? She kind of had that puffy, oh, like I'm whatever kind of face to her. And when we get to the airport, she's walking faster than me, you know, leaving me and my friends behind and being like, hurry up, hurry up, you know, snipping at me. Like, I'm like, dude, fuck this, you know? I had enough. So I stopped dead in my tracks and I go, listen, I came down here with my friends. I'm not going to leave them so you can just stop, right? In fact, to be honest with you, I don't even want to leave them, you know? I want to go home with them. And if you want to go home by yourself, go. Go home by yourself. Now, at that point, I turned and left. I walked back towards my friends. And it got interesting, right? Because she walked ahead by herself. And I walked behind her for a little while. And, you know, I'm waiting for my friends to catch up. But I noticed that she starts to begin to walk slower and slower and slower. And finally, she stopped and she's waiting for me. When I caught up to her, there was this completely different look in her eyes. It was like, I can't even explain it, right? But she began talking to me the way she had earlier in the week before she had lost, you know, turned cold and distant on me. Um, She she tried to put her arm around me and she tried to get me to forgive her. And she kind of, you know, she never said I'm sorry, but you can tell that all of a sudden, boom, the attraction was back. And Instead, though, I kind of kept my head and and, and kept walking. Now, by the time we got on the plane, she's like distraught, right? She's all over me. And the more I push her away, the more she's coming on to me. With one small interaction, I had completely reprogrammed the entire balance of power in this relationship. And it was at that point that I saw the full potential of correctly handling women's tests. Because here's the thing subconsciously, she did not want me to leave my friends and go on that plane with her. That would have just been weakness to me. She wanted me to stand up to her. She might not even have known it on a conscious level, but once I did, it actually increased her attraction towards me. And I used to believe that when a woman was bitchy or sarcastic or whatever, she wasn't interested. Now I believe if a girl is super nice, if she's, you know, if she's like oh, overly nice, she might, she's probably indifferent towards you, right? When they start getting a little snippy with you, it's because they, they, they like you and they, and, and, and they want you to regain that attraction that they have with them. And the great thing is, is when you look, look forward to these, right? Um, so if a girl starts saying things like you're a jerk or you're a player, she's testing you to see how you handle yourself under confrontation. And, you know, she wants to know, are you going to fly off the handle in anger, right? And that's not a high status guy. Um, will you bow down to her? You know, will you say, okay, I'll get on the plane with you? Will you resort to lying? Um, will you put your tail between your legs and leave? Women are going to do things to see how you react, to see if you're congruent. Because like we said in, 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 the, in the previous video, um, incongruence sets an alarm in their head. Um, and they're going to try to shut down your game. They don't want to be open to moving things further with you. Do they know if you're for real? Do they know if you're worth it? They want to make you work for it. I hope this encourages you to look forward to tests instead of fearing them Um, because they really do give you an opportunity when you know how to handle them. They give you an opportunity to show a woman that you're not a pathetic, clueless, nice guy ready to roll over for her and that increases her attraction towards you. So we have another video tomorrow in this series where we're going to go a little further into this and also I'm going to show you some other skills to develop and some other nice guy habits to break. But for this lesson, I want you to start going out and recognizing what could be a potential test and learning to, to react honestly, right? The honest reaction is, is ultimately the right reaction. If, 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 if your honest reaction, my honest reaction was, I don't really want to leave my friends. So that was the right reaction, right? That was the right thing to do to say, you know what? I don't want to leave my friends. Um, So practice an honest reaction and most likely you'll be passing the tests in the correct way. But in tomorrow's video, I will give you some additional skills.